come, 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 And that for me was what the show was about. So for the producers at the end to be like, oh, they were miserable and these people were happy because they took temptations, it's absolute bollocks. I guarantee you they're not happy. Because if you're that weak and that soft that you take every temptation in order to give you happiness, how could you ever truly be happy anyway? I spoke about this at length on the TV show. They didn't show you and all them lot are sitting there talking about chocolate bars and coffee and I'm staring out at the Indian fucking ocean. And I remember running into that water and diving in and I felt like I was being baptized by, by God. I felt like nature was replenishing my soul. They didn't show any of that. So it's just, it is what it is. But at the same time, of course, when you watch that, it's a bit like, fuck, not only am I being edited out, but I'm also, they're also trying to create a narrative. But the truth is, Luke, C Y Y Y Y Y Y. Why? Why me? So there, there are two quite significant. <laughs> exactly. Why not? There are two quite significant halves to this story. And halves. Ha the, the haves and have nots. Yeah, the haves and have nots. That's have with an L. The celebs that go dating, the celebs that don't. <laughs> oh, I see. It's back on. Morning, brand new celebs go dating. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, they're is the story of having been on a TV show. Yeah. And then there is the story of that TV show having been on television. So first of all, I just want, I'm, I'm going to take these two broad subjects that could theoretically fill a book. Each, each story could fill its own book, right? But we're not going to fill a book right now because this is like quick television style, bite-sized interview. Yeah. And, and I want to just put your, put your mind into the time when you've just finished the show Tempting Fortunes mm -hmm. you haven't seen a second of it you haven't heard a second of it there hasn't been a single ad you've just left South Africa you've gotten on a plane you've come back to the UK I remember okay? it I remember it well so putting your brain back there yep. can you give us a summary of what it felt like to have been through that experience and know you, you've been on this giant TV show but nobody's seen it yet. It was funny because when I got back to the UK after being in there, in that experience, that it was very surreal and I felt um, almost like an alien in this in this environment. Um, I kind of equate it to being uh, like, it's funny because Truly, in the show, Truly would re re refer to me as Tarzan. And coming back to the UK, back to London where I live, it felt like Tarzan in the city. What the hell are you staring at? Do you have any idea what it's like out there? Do you? Like, because I, I felt so um, detached from my environment. Everything was was loud. Everything was bright. Everything was big in 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 this city. And everything was, was just jarring me. Like I remember walking down the street and you know, one of the interesting things is when you're in the wilderness and you're walking, you've got to be so aware of your environment because there are potential dangers and pitfalls all around you, be it uh, different um, trees and plants with really sharp, you know, uh, leaves that will stab you and cut you. I'm not, no plane, they like massive fangs on these, on these plants where it's scorpions and snakes and all these different creatures. When you're in there, you've got to be so aware of your environment. And it's really empowering in a way because it, it means that you can't get lost in the future or start to ruminate over the past. You've got to be really present in the moment in order to stay safeguard your, your, your health. So then stepping back into, into the city and everyone's just so relaxed and everyone's on their phones and everyone's just so distracted by their brain and their thought processes for me it was really jarring because I was, I was i was i was still very much in tune with everything i still my body was still living in a little bit of i don't want to say fear because i think it was a healthy but it, a certain sense of you need to be switched on luke you need to be aware of your environment you need to be aware of your space so everything that happened around me was really really big and I remember when I came back, like the idea of going into crowded environments, like going back into the, uh, into the city center or going on the, on the tube, 
and you know using the tube line and stuff all of those things that i did have to do um i was trying to take it sparingly and take it slowly as i stepped back into the city life again because everything just seemed to overrun me i remember just going into the supermarket even just the colors in the supermarket all the different colors and everything it all just seemed really loud and really um uh, a bit a bit um blaring and a bit sort of overbearing mm. yeah and a bit too much so it took me a while to tune back in to this environment which to be honest with you is kind of sad really because really that was a much purer life that I was living out there you know and that's what what um, appealed to me in the first place when I was uh, contacted to be on the show George when I was contacted to be on the show that was the way it was kind of sold to me really that you'd be living in the wilderness that you would be you know you'd be this in this experiment and you'd be challenged and you'd be tested and you'd be put in a situation where you'd have to embrace the elements and you'd disconnect from society and you'd disconnect from technology and all of these things and to me this was like fantastic this was like a dream you're going to you're going to you're going to I don't have to pay you you're going to pay me to go and live in the, in the wilderness like th- this is incredible like I couldn't ask for anything better. It was like God handed me a gift, a priceless gift. And that's the irony of the situation because I was going into that where people were complaining about they were missing this and they were missing their phone and they were missing their this. But for me it was like perfect because I wanted to detach from all of this. I wanted to get back to to nature, to get back to 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 who we were, who we are as human beings and I spoke about this at length on the TV show there were there were times where uh different camera people different directors would ask me about my motivations about my reasons for being in there and I would speak at length about how I wanted to reconnect to my roots as a human being to get back to nature to get back to the wilderness to get back to where we came from as a species and how I felt like this is how we evolve as human beings not by giving in to temptation after temptation by by actually transcending our temptations transcending our desires and our wants and our needs and actually understanding what's truly precious in our lives which is togetherness which is just, which is community which is a gathering of of hearts and souls and that for me is what it was about and that's for me is why there are friendships that I made in that series that I'll have for life because we bonded through um through sacrifice you know and in this world in this in this society this capitalist society that we're living in um you know sacrifice is something that is seen is frowned upon the idea of 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 giving something up or the idea of of having a strong will a strong mind of being resistant of being resilient being tough being tenacious of fighting through things of fighting through discomfort and pain and suffering in order to to reach a bigger goal in order to ascend not descend yeah and that's what it's all about there was a scene in that show where I where I said I I said we are the three kings and we are here to ascend not descend that was part of a much longer uh monologue where I I spoke about how as human beings it's so easy to be um influenced and take the easy route and take the easy you know the small cherry at the bottom of the leaf you just pluck that but there are bigger cherries there are juicier cherries at the top of the tree but in order to get to those those juicy ones you've got to climb and you're going to sweat and it's going to be tough and you might fall down and you might injure yourself and you might have to get up and you might have to wait and you might have to train you might have to get stronger and then you might have to climb again and climb again until you can reach the highest of the highs in order to get that juicy juicy fruit at the top of the tree but nowadays nobody wants to do that they just want to pluck those easy fruits and if you're willing to 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 climb up to the top of that tree you'll have people grabbing your legs scraping your arms trying to pull you down and say who are you to try and climb who are you to try to be the king or the queen of your life of your castle and that's the 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 issue that i had in the in the series because i knew i was there for something bigger and something deeper and i did try to explain that in many many times but to be honest with you uh to be honest with you i don't think my philosophy on life um is necessarily something that sells it's not something that you can commodify you know i'm not trying to make a financial uh pledge here you know that you can't make money off of uh basically being as a, as independent and as as autonomous as possible and connecting with people connecting with community connecting with tribe 
living your life from the heart, understanding that possessions, that material things have their place, but they should not be your primary concern in life. That true light and true love comes through connection and joy. And that can only come through, through sometimes dealing with hard, tough, difficult times in your life, but finding community and finding people that you can support and finding people that have your back. And that's what I found in there with the wolf pack. We were looking after each other. We understood that we were all suffering, but we, we had a greater, greater goal in mind and we were willing to sacrifice for each other. And that bonded us as a group and made us stronger. You know, in the show, I feel like they often made it out that we were very unhappy and we were miserable and we were suffering. And I really take issue with that. We may be suffering, we may have suffered, but we weren't miserable, we weren't unhappy. If anything, that connection that we had together as a group grew stronger through the sacrifice and through the tough times that we had to go through in order to reach the end of the season. So for me, this is what it was all about. And I wish, if I'm honest, that that had been shown more. But I also understand that, you know, a TV channel, a TV show, a media company, they, they're in the business of entertainment. They're in the business of creating drama. They're in business of, of headlines and they're not necessarily here to show the truth of, or another version of truth, you know, of what it really is and the experience that I had and maybe the experience that some of the others had as well, whose voices were potentially uh, silenced or at least feigned, you know? So yeah, I don't know if that answers the question, George, but I kind of went off on one there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's excellent. There's nothing I've been waiting that. to get that shit out. <laughs> Could you tell? The the uh, so you you brought you started to branch a little bit into having actually seen how how it was edited. So it took about six months from leaving the show to seeing it seeing it on television, see, seeing the experience. Now, there's a certain amount of expectation because you've lived through something, and and to some degree it's it's like a holiday that the whole the whole world now has access to see this holiday you went on or this experience you went on. Um, so definitely a version of that holiday. Yeah. But, but this is the thing. So what I'm saying is you experienced something and then you saw it through the, the eyes of the TV editors. Okay. So yeah. you've come out and, and you have said it was a, it was a wonderful experience. It was hard, but it was, it was, it was a tremendous, quite a life affirming experience. To, to to actually experience not to watch to experience but, it was insane was was beautiful was incredible i i i, I feel so blessed to have been had the opportunity to be in the wilderness of south africa living that life you know what i mean connected with nature connected with source um and to actually have to challenge myself and test myself to have to resist temptations was was a perfect metaphor for life in my eyes we're constantly being uh, offered temptations every day you wake up every day you as soon as you wake up you look at your phone you're being offered a temptation why don't you go on social media why don't you you know go and buy something go to do some online shopping why don't you get this why don't you get you leave the house there's an advert oh you should buy this you go into the, into the supermarket why should I buy that well maybe I should buy it I don't know maybe it's not good for me but I want it it tastes good right mm. constant temptations everywhere you go there are temptations go on your dating app oh, maybe I should see her maybe I should see him flish flish flat you know you know scroll 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 it's constant temptation so to me this show was an incredible idea. Who came up with it was fantastic. And for me to have the opportunity to go in there to challenge myself, this is what I'm talking about. Because for me, this is what it was about. It was always about, it was always about the challenge. If there'd been no money on the line, I still would not have taken a temptation. I guarantee you there was no way in hell I was going to take a temptation because I wanted to challenge myself. For me, it wasn't about fun and games. For me, it was about embracing the test embracing the challenge for me it was a survival show it was a survival show of the of of uh, willpower and strength because things got tough in there things were really tough but just because something's tough and you suffer it doesn't mean you can't in a weird way enjoy it and on another level these are the things that are important in, in if you want to grow if you want to evolve as a human being you need to go through suffering you can't just live a comfortable easy life how are you going to grow how are you going to get stronger well there's something to be said about um maybe pride is the wrong word but let's say there's a boxer and they've they know they've lost the fight but they've made it to the 12th round sure. let's say rocky won the very sure. first rocky film when he fought apollo is, is not about winning it's about can i stay in the ring as a so-called normal guy yeah but if i can just stay in the ring 
don't have to win. I just have to stick it out. Yeah. Well, by that point, he's made his money. He's made his money in the first round. He can walk away. He's going to get paid the same amount whether he lasts one round or 12. And it's obviously it resonates with people because it's still a, a film that people love to this day, you know, 40 years later. Um, and, and for some reason that, that does stick. So I think everybody would be able to relate to that. But that being said, now we're going to talk about the edit. Yeah. Because that, that was the experience and that's that's part of the feeling of, of, of why you, you, you experienced it the way you did, opting to not take any temptations. Um, so you have something in your mind. Now it's not in your mind. Now it's on TV. Okay, so it's a bit like seeing it through somebody else's eyes, mm. essentially. Uh, so how do, what what are the feelings now you've seen the whole thing like like you I, i'm trying what i'm trying to get at here is you get off a plane you left south africa you feel a certain way about the experience well now, to be fair, i think i've gone into that substantially from your first question well a little bit yeah. but but now like you don't have to answer it no i can but, but, I do, but, I, but I, let, I think let's I imagine what, watching the show is getting off a second plane sure but rather than looking back at south africa you're looking back at the series you just watched so how different is it? Is it, I mean, is it very it's, similar? It's, is, it, is it a totally different experience? Like, what, what is it? it? It's such a weird experience watching a TV show that you've been in and watching it through the lens of, of an editor, of a director, of a channel, a conglomerate, a corporation who are obviously, they have their agenda and they have their, their story, they have their narrative that they're pushing. So for me, watching it, it felt very, very strange because... In a way, it was almost, there was moments where it was almost like out of body. It was almost like, it was weird. It, it was almost like, it was like an out of body of experience watching the, watching yourself on a show. I remember one episode, we were sitting around the fire and, and we were talking and, and we, it's when the two groups were split and we were discussing the situation and we were discussing how we felt the other group were handling it and, and stuff like that. And, and I remember watching it and thinking, hang on a minute, like, we, we, we had such a good time as a group. When we separated, it was the best time. Mm. As the Wolfpack, when it was just us, we had such a good time in there. We had so many good moments. Were we suffering? Of course. We didn't have the luxuries that the other group were having. We, weren't, we didn't have the disco and the fucking whatever, the croissants and the coffee. But as a group, we bonded and we were enjoying each other's fucking company so much. And we had so many beautiful moments in there, so many peak peak experience moments as a group so many laughs i remember one night when we were separated as a group we laughed so much i just remember laughing so much to the point where i was almost in tears because we were just we were just enjoying each other's company so much we didn't have distractions and we didn't have indulgencies to 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 enjoy so we had to find other ways to enjoy uh enjoy the experience and we did yet watching the show it was like oh we're just a bunch of miserable fuckers you know and they're the bunch, they're having a great time. And it's like, it's so black and white. Like, if you want to enjoy life, you've got to take temptations. If you, if, you're, if you don't want to enjoy life, sure, you don't take temptations. Maybe you might earn a bit more money, but you're not going to enjoy life. And it was like, hang on a minute. That's not what it was about. We were enjoying, we were, but we were having a different experience. And through the sacrifices that we made, it bonded us as a group. It strengthened us as a group. Does it mean that we were challenged? Of course, but we still enjoyed it. You also trusted it. I mean, I did think, even though it, it did seem to be edited in a certain way, exactly as you just said, I did notice that um, the body language, which is maybe not everyone pays attention to, but the body language of your group was becoming closer. There was more touching among you lot. There, there was more kind of hugging. And it's, it's like if you ask the average man and woman, what do they want in a relationship? Uh, loyalty springs up a lot. Yes. Oh, I want a loyal person your group was very loyal to each other because you trusted each other yeah. that this we're all kind of in this together but the other group were having fun but but there was a disloyalty because it was like well at any minute this person could go and do this and this person could go and do this someone better might come along and they'll ditch me and they'll go off and they have the opportunity to go off with them or whatever so even though they did try to kind of edit it the the, the ones taking temptations have were having fun and you weren't um the loyalty among you lot seemed to be creating a much a much stronger bond, and and it's interesting they'd edit it that way because in life, um, loyalty is relevant for family and things like that. It's it's a very important part of friendships and marriages and absolutely uh, even even the trust children have in their own parents, like the trust that the parent will 
return and will be there for them and stuff like that. Um, I think when yeah. you've got character, listen, I'm not going to start bad mouth in the other group. They they made their choices, they live their lives their way. But I think when you say one thing and then you do another and you you keep switching and and, and changing and and moving the goalposts about what you know, I'm not going to take this, I'm not going to take that, and you take this and you take that, and and you're trying to influence people to take stuff. For me, that is not. Um, someone that I'd want to spend time with. You know, when you're, when you're taking things and you're not being honest about it, that's another thing. Is that, well, if you're willing to take something, you might as well be honest about it. If you've got nothing to be ashamed of, just be honest about it. You can't blame someone. Oh, but I'm afraid if I tell them I'm going to take something, I've, I've taken this temptation, they're going to they're gonna be annoyed at me. They're going to be angry at me. Well, hang on a minute. Live, live by your decisions. Live by your choices. If I took a temptation, I'd say, look, I took it. This is why I took it. I wanted it. I wanted it for X, Y, and Z. No, just moving on. You, you had... Uh... You said eloquently whilst we watched the show. In fact, as soon as the first show finished, you said the show I experienced is not the show yeah, I just watched. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll give you examples. I don't know if you know. I'll just say it. it doesn't mean you have to show it on this on this video. But like, oh, it's being shown. Well, <laughs> for that first episode. I don't want to like make it. But like that first episode, all I did was help everyone to get up the sand dunes. Like, uh, Lani was really struggling, particularly to get up the sand dunes. God bless her, truly had had her, you know, her struggles to get up the sand dunes. And I helped, I, basically, I was just helping everyone to get up the sand dunes, the people that needed the help, the most help. Uh, that was my, my concern was for other people. And I felt like I was willing to sacrifice my own energy levels, my own strength, my own endurance for the greater good. Because I, for me, I guess I was naive maybe, but I, for me, it's just the way I've been raised to try and help people, to try and look after people. No, if, but, if they're struggling, then you should try and help them. So I did that. And in the first episode, you wouldn't know that, really. You didn't see that. Absolutely not. No, but that was the truth we, of the situation. We didn't really know that anyone ever helped anybody. No. Was was pretty much how it was edited. It was, yeah. But you did say to me, because I know it, it troubled you to see that things like that had been removed. In yeah, it did trouble but, me. But you also said you, you, you kind of came to terms with it a bit by thinking to yourself... Um, if I had to do it again, would I have done it any differently? And you were like, no, I'd because still at the help. end of the day, that because was the right thing to do. Help, and and I, and I had the strength to help. So uh, you know, the thing, I like, there was a moment, and again, it's like I could have, you know, the, there were so many things I could have done in there differently to try and get more shine. You know, like I could have taken off my shirt every five minutes. You know, I work out every day. You know, I could have taken my shirt off every five minutes. But if it felt like it was, it was like cheap cheap and not really for the right intention i didn't want to do it i wanted to do things that felt natural and felt right it felt right to help people up the sand dune even though they didn't show it but it felt right to help lani as much as i could there was another scene uh in a further episode where we were in a swamp and we had to wade through a swamp and lani was really struggling bless her and i was happy to help her i held her hand for the whole journey through the swamp we were in there for like an hour wading through the swamp you can ask her i'm sure she'll tell you the truth she's just she's a good person um and you know i know she's a good person and they didn't show any of that you know they didn't show me helping Lani at all so it's just it is what it is but at the same time of course when you watch that it's a bit like fuck i'm being i'm being edited not only am i being edited out but i'm also they're also trying to create a narrative that we're all just individuals trying to you know dog eat dog just trying to get to the end, trying to get as much money as possible. But the truth is, even though we were separated as a group, we were still trying to help each other. And I tried to help as many people as I could in as many situations as, as I could. And and Lani obviously was, was, was the most divisive figure, the most divisive character in the show. But despite that, when she struggled, particularly in the first half of the season of the show, I tried to help her as much as possible. And I still would. If I met her tomorrow, I'd try and help her if I could help her. You know, if we had to get up a mountain, I'd help her because it's the right thing to do. Unfortunately, Channel 4 and editing, they don't necessarily see things that way. So it is what it is. Well, they, they don't see it as it makes a great piece of a 40, 42. Yeah, because they, wanted, sure. they wanted to create also the story that we were against each other, that we were each other's enemies. I, I, I did find that quite unusual because... Sad, at, though. At the, Sad, though, isn't it? Yeah, but what I thought was interesting was it was a shared pot. The, the, the prize fund was split. And until they changed a couple of rules in the last episode or so, yeah, the whole point was everyone's going to walk out with the same amount as everybody else. I don't think so they would have was... changed those rules if it wasn't for the fact that I think they expected people to be break, to be taking more and more and more, and they wanted to create more drama, so they decided to do that. But I think they did that too late. I think they have a, a, a just 
So hypothetically, I think they have a number of vari variations ready just in case. Yeah. So they go, if this happens, we'll try this. If this doesn't happen, we'll try this. Yeah. I think they have a few options. Um, and I'm sure someone put it on the table of like, uh, those who took temptations don't get anything and and it, I'm sure it was up in the air but never probably never was going to get decided upon yeah. um the but the interesting thing about the the camaraderie uh, amongst you is they did make out like it was quite uh, an, a dog eat dog everyone out for themselves and and the to me um I, I did feel it was hard done by but I, and I thought completely unfairly that they did imply by the end at the end that you had uh those who hadn't taken any temptations had done it for money like we held out so we got paid and Absolutely. those those who took temptations had a great time and at the end of the day isn't that what life is all about and um and i'd say anyone can... who's anyone who's watched uh, rocky or or rocky four that scene where he's talking to his son it's another side that like wants to take more wants to go that one more round because like going that one more round when you don't think you can that's what makes all the difference in your life it shapes the way you live the rest of your life um i think it could make i think that the editors the producers the powers that be completely missed a lot of the point of the show for me anyway because that experience was in itself incredible the temptations that's called a temptation for a reason. And in life, if you take every temptation that's offered to you, you're not going to get anywhere in life. You're not going to, you're not going to improve. You're not going to get, you're not going to get stronger. You're not going to, there's no way you're going to go. You're just going to, you're not going to improve in any shape or form. Life is about resistance. Life is about power. Life is about strength. Of course, life is about enjoying, about embracing life, about having fun. But there are moments for that. Being in a reality TV show where the whole idea behind the show is, can you resist temptations? That's what it was about for me. It was about resisting. So for me to be in that show, to just take temptations, wouldn't have made any sense. And for them at the end of the show to kind of imply that they they we, we held out and were miserable and they gave in and had a little bit less money but were happy was because they enjoyed anyway. life was false anyway. It was yeah. completely false. And, and I think the bond you have maintained with a number of the friends you made there is, is testament to that. And also, you not only, friends with them. absolutely, George, not only is the bond that we created in the show with the people that did not take Temptations as a group got, was so strong and so powerful and shows the power of what it is to be human when people come together as a collective with teamwork and community and resistance to, you know, Temptations and to things that are there to sway you and, and point you in the wrong direction. But what also it gives you is that power of knowing that you have that inner strength, that you have that inner power, that when you are challenged in life, in your life, which you inevitably will be, you can you can look at you can look and say, "Hang on a minute, I've done this, I've done that. I, I, I was in the jungle for eighteen days. I resisted temptations when people couldn't do it, when there was only a few of us who were able to survive because I had the strength and the willpower to do so." Now that's not me saying I'm better than anyone else. It's not because I think every single person in that show had the power to do what I did, had the power to resist temptation. They just chose not to. They took the easy way. They took the soft route. Now, that's their decision. But for me, I, I want to know that I am able to overcome challenges and, and obstacles in my life. And that was a huge uh, challenge and obstacle. And I, I embraced it and I enjoyed it. And, I, I, and that's what life's about, enjoying it. Sometimes suffering is painful, but you get a power, you get a strength from it. Like anybody who's trying to train for anything in life, look, the, the, the Olympic athlete who's going to the gym every day, he's struggling, right? He's struggling in order to then get to the Olympics and, and win the gold medal. Now, I'm not saying I'm an Olympic athlete, but what I'm saying is in life, if you're going to improve and get better and get to the top of your game, you're going to have to struggle to get there. If you think you're going to just take the soft route, the easy route, and you're going to get all the success in the world, then you're not going to achieve anything in life. And that's what I was there for, to do. And that's what you should be doing right now. So if you're looking at that show and watching that TV show and thinking, those guys were miserable. They they didn't take temptations, and those guys were happy and they took them. I'm gonna take the easy route. I'm gonna just take every temptation. Then good luck, son, because life ain't like that. Life's not gonna life's gonna kick you in the ass when you do that. But those Trust viewers, me. Those viewers, sorry to put it bluntly, but they were lied to, because the viewers who were t that is the kind of moral that seemed to come out of the end. That's of the what show. I'm saying. It was but, a horrible but, moral. But, but it was enjoy, yeah, just take was, temptations in order to enjoy life. But it was it was a false moral. Bollocks. Because, because I know what you felt like when you came out of it. And I know 
that I was thinking while watching it. I was euphoric when I came out of there because I succeeded in my in my test, in my challenge. My challenge was to resist temptation, to grow, to ascend, not descend. And I did that. And like for me to just go in there and take a fucking coffee and take a chocolate bar and take a hotel, what's the fucking point? What's the point of that? Like go into reality show in order to like have a chocolate bar and a coffee because I feel a bit a bit shit today and I need a bit of a pick me up. That's weak. I'm telling you straight now, in my eyes, that's weak. That's weak living. And that's just going to literally filter into everything that you do in your life. Every decision you make filters into every other decision. Everything that Every time you take the easy route in the small things, it's like a tap. It's like a tap, right? If you don't screw it back properly and it keeps drip, drip, dripping, suddenly you're going to have a problem because your whole bathtub is going to be full of water, right? You need to close that lid cleanly and properly in order to fucking get better in life you need to have a, a strong will a strong mind you need to put yourself in situations where you know you're going to struggle where you know it's going to be tough and you need to challenge yourself and see where your line is of course sometimes you're not going to make it but that's fine as long as your heart and your will is in the right place and you're willing to challenge yourself and push yourself to get further that's how we grow that's how we evolve why don't people understand that why do people think you can just take the easy route and take all your temptations and life is great and life is happy but is it really happy how are you truly going to be happy if you just take the easy route all the time and take all the temptations? What's the value in that? Where is the value in your life if you just have access to everything that's easy and everything that's soft and you just take it every single time? If you just take the shortcut, every opportunity you've, you get, how are you going to grow? How are you going to evolve as a person? How are you going to have any willpower, any strength? How are you going to better yourself in any way? There's, there's nothing to learn there. There's nothing to do. You're just being lazy. You're being soft and you're being weak. You need to challenge yourself and better yourself and put yourself in those situations and find your warrior fucking spirit because we've all got it. And if you're sitting there thinking, fuck this, that's why, because you're weak. I'm sorry, you're weak. You need to look at yourself in the eye and be honest with yourself. If you can't fucking test yourself and put yourself in a situation where you can grow, if you're willing to take the fucking low-hanging fruit every time, you're never going to amount to anything in life. That's the fact. It's all within you. It's all within your power. You've just got to make that decision. It's not on me. It's on you. You've got to do it. Do it for yourself. Choose right now. I'm speaking from the heart. It's not from a place of anger or bitterness. It's from a place of knowing how many times I've suffered in my life, how many times I've had to fight through shit. I've had to fight through challenges and tests where I've not wanted on it, when I wanted, when I wanted to give up, when I wanted to quit. But I fought through it despite all the pain and all the suffering that I've been going through. I fought through it because I know to the betterment of my spirit, it's going to help me to grow and evolve as a human being. So why should I take the easy route when I know what's on the other side of that tough route? It's fucking, it's fucking improvement. And that's what it's about. It's about improving yourself, about growing as a human being. And that for me was what the show was about. So for the producers at the end to be like, oh, they were miserable and these people were happy because they took temptations. It's absolute bollocks. I guarantee you they're not happy. Because if you're that weak and that soft that you take every temptation in order to give you happiness, how could you ever truly be happy anyway? That's true. Yeah. Because if, if you were more, if you felt fulfilled. If you felt fully fulfilled, you wouldn't be need to take all these temptations. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I was finding fulfillment within myself. They didn't show you. But I was finding fulfillment in the fucking glare of the, George, in the sun, George. George they, were not, George, they didn't show it, right? I would jump in the ocean. There was one time where we were staying by the, uh, by the Indian Ocean, freezing cold Indian Ocean, infested with sharks, right? And I remember waking up one morning and that ocean was there and I looked up and the sun was rising. And I said to myself, what opportunity will I get? Talk about a temptation, George. Yeah. What opportunity will I get to swim in the, Indio in the Indian Ocean on an abandoned beach, which is literally just for me and this group of people? And all them lot are sitting there talking about chocolate bars and coffee and I'm staring out at the Indian fucking ocean and the fucking sun is shining above me. And that to me was glory. That to me was fucking joy. That to me was paradise. And I remember running into that water and diving in and I felt like I was being baptised by, by God. I felt like nature was replenishing my soul as I felt the freezing cold water spark into my body. I felt the electricity start to rise up within my own presence, my own spirit, as I felt so connected to the world, to nature, to what it is to be alive, to what it is to be human, to what it is to be a part of this incredible, incredible fucking natural life that is going on all around us. To me, if they'd have said to me, Luke, that's a temptation. If you jump in that ocean, you're gonna lose 2,000 pounds. That to me would have been hard to resist because that to me was the true beauty of, of that experience of getting to enjoy all those beautiful moments and those beautiful things. 
And to me, that is why I was there. So for me to say I was miserable because I didn't take a coffee and I didn't take a spa and I didn't take a hotel is absolutely ridiculous because I had everything I needed. I was being gifted so many beautiful things. All you had to do was open your eyes. All you had to do was listen and hear and feel and connect. But hey, not everybody sees things that way, do they? But I did and I felt it. And it was right there, right here. And I felt it every single day that I was in there. So for me, it was a huge blessing. And all the temptations that were apparently taken away from me I was gifted with so much more, so many more, so much more abundance, so much more par par paradise. I was in paradise. I was, it was tough. It was challenging. It was a struggle. It was a battle. It was a war. But at the same time, surrounded by all these beautiful natural, natural things, for me, only helped me to connect to my own nature, my own naturalness, my own beauty within myself, which I think in this society that we live in, it's so, it's so easy to get disconnected. It's so easy to feel so, so much a, a, like an individual so 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 broken and so small and so not part of a beautiful tapestry which makes up this world which makes up this life yet when you're in that environment you feel so much more connected and you feel so much more valuable and so much more present and awake and awakens your own self and that's why i was there that's why i feel so blessed to be there and that's why it's sad to see the way the reality show was then edited and shown because they didn't give you any of that did they you're not you're not aware of any of that significance any of that beauty that was that was discovered through nature, which then mirrored back into your own self. It's very interesting because it, on some level, it does tell you the, the power of a price tag, how in, in, a, in a capitalist system, if they say, well, the croissant is uh, £5.99 and the, the swim in the ocean is free, people get conditioned to think, well, um, maybe I'll take the croissant, it's worth more. And, and in the show, I mean, I was thinking the whole time, partly because you said so, you know, South, 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 South Africa was so phenomenally beautiful and it, you know you'd have paid for the experience just to go out there and yet what was our, like unusual in the show was it, it kept trying to be portrayed as as a hell yeah you're in hell and the only way out of the hell is to, to take, to take a, temptation. a coca cola and a cup of coffee and it's like uh, I was thinking you were thinking no th this is paradise and you, you can't you can't frame it as hell absolutely this is the most beautiful place I've just about exactly seen. George and who so, said paradise doesn't isn't going to be have some toughness to it you know what i mean if you still have, you still have to challenge yourself you still have to to, to deal with with tests and, and obstacles but at the same time you're living in nature you know you're, you're camping you're wild camping out in nature you've got a beautiful fire going the whole time you're embracing the elements yeah it's challenging and tough but it's also absolutely beautiful and an absolute privilege to be there did, this is the privilege this is the gift it did feel like very quickly it felt like a a, a big ad for capitalism and I, I don't mean that in an utterly derogatory way but it's but it's a show that's on a show a channel with tv commercials, TV commercials. roughly four ad breaks per show or something like that and i know that they have contracts and deals with the advertisers so there are certain things they're not going to want to have said on the tv show yeah which again was a little ludicrous uh, on a bridge of a british ship a sailor calls down to the galley and asks in my script for a pot of tea because I believe that it's constitutionally acceptable in the British Navy to drink tea. Yeah. Uh, my, one of my sponsors happens to sell instant coffee, and he took great embrage, or at least minor embrage anyway, yeah. with the idea of uh, saying tea. Well, George, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this again, but I'll say it and we can decide later. But there was a, there was a moment in there where there was a particular um, incredible, incredible um, uh, temptation in there, George, where we had to... Well, it was kind of a temptation. Basically, there was this huge river that we had to cross. And this river was incredibly powerful in terms of like the current was incredibly powerful. And we were told, look, this is a really tough challenge, guys. If you want to do this challenge, obviously you can. But this is going to be a really tough challenge for all of you, no matter like your quality, you know, your swimming ability and all the rest of it. But if you want to get through this, you're going to have to be a group. Now, listen to me here, George. In order to get through this, you're going to have to we're going to attach all of your, um, your, your, um, not waterproof, your, your, um, how do you say it? The, your, so your bags will float in the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we do is we'll attach all your bags together. So they'll become like a ring and all of you would have to hold onto your bags together. So you'd all have to hold the bags together and you'd have to swim across. You have to like doggy paddle across the river together as a group in order to make it to the other side. Obviously, if you were to let go, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be, cast out so you'd have to stay together as a group you'd have to unite in order to get to the other side and on top of that 
um, you'd have like a raft in the middle and that will have all your belongings in it as well. So you have to try and keep the whole raft up straight and make sure that you all get up over there together, right? Now imagine us as a group, we're being told that you're going to have to work together, all of us, yeah? In order to get across, you're going to go up, you're going to go off in groups and you're going to get across that water. And if you do that, you've, you've overcome this incredible challenge. Now, hang on, hang on a minute. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. For like two grand or whatever, or five grand, or whatever it was, you can get a speedboat across. You can just get a speedboat across. Now, we were also told this water had sharks in it. Now, I think that was a bit of an over, maybe an over exaggeration. But I was told there were dangerous animals in this water. And because we were told that one, I'm not going to say who, but one person decided she was, she or she was very afraid to go in that water because of the potential dangers, right? So she decided to take the speedboat. So she took the speedboat. All of the rest of us, every single other person decided, fuck it, we're all going to collect our bags together and we're going to go in that water and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fucking do it. We're going to challenge ourselves. And we all got in that water group by group. We, we were split into like three groups. We all chose who we'd be with based on who was the strongest swimmer, who was the weakest swimmer. We'd protect each other. We'd look after each other. We'd help each other to get through it. Yeah? We all went on different sections of the bags in order to try and level it out. And we all got in there and we were so united as a group. All 12 of us were completely united as a group, George. And I can tell you right now, right now, George, that was a, the hardest part of the show. As soon as we got into the water, because you couldn't see because the water was too murky, so you couldn't see to the, to the bottom. But as soon as you got in, you just dropped. So it was this huge adrenaline rush. You know, when you go into water and, you, and you're walking and then suddenly your body just goes and you have no idea where the bottom is. And the water is gushing, it's gushing, it's gushing. It's, the current is really strong. So that fear kicked in. And a few of us, including myself, was quite nervous and quite scared about, about doing this. But we all looked at each other in the eye and we all encouraged, it's going to be all right. We can do this. We all encouraged each other, George. Like, we can do this. We can get through this. As a group, we can get through this. And we all, group by group, swam our asses over to the other side of that river, George. And I can tell you, George, the euphoria that we felt as we reached the other side of that river was tantamount to anything I've ever experienced in my life. It was so incredible. It wasn't just because I did it, it was because we did it as a group. And I wasn't only just proud of myself, but I was so proud of every single person. I remember going to like people like, like Dan, for example, I remember going to Dan and saying, I'm so proud of you, man. Like that was incredible. Like Dan doesn't really swim, right? But he got in that water and he did it. And I was so proud of him. And I was so happy for him and impressed by his strength and by his willpower to have done it. And we were so united as a group. We were, we were like on cloud nine. But none of it made the show. Mm. They didn't show any of it. They didn't show any of it. They didn't want to show you working as a group. Maybe because they didn't want to show us working as a group. Maybe they didn't want to show that collective community that we had at that time as a group. A we were so close. We were so connected. And I want to say this, George, I want to say to the audience as well, that I think after that, when people, I think that is why when people started to take temptations, so it, it, after going through that as a group, it felt even more like, wow, you know, oh, you're just going to take the coffee after what we just went through, after what we just went through as a group, you just want to take a coffee. Like, listen, we were so united and so connected as, as, as a group in that, in that moment. And I just think it's a real shame that those things weren't shown because for me, those things are important. Community and raising the vibration of, of the people that are watching at home is what I was hoping they would show you. But for me, that show was all about salaciousness and lowering the vibration and, and, and teaching you that if you want to take temptations, it's okay. It's okay to take temptations because that's how you'd be happy in life. And to me, like you said, George, that's just capitalism right there. There's just one long advert for, for commercialism and, 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 and capitalism, which is for me is a real shame because there were some real moments of collective, of collective, collective endeavor and strength and willpower as a group. And this is what it's about because when people come together, there truly is strength in numbers. Any government, any country only has power over its people when, because people feel that they don't have any power, that they're individuals, that they're separate from one another. But when people come together as a, as a unit, as a group with one sound of mind, you can move mountains. You can truly move mountains and change the world for the better. And those things, they don't want to show you on TV. And it's a shame because they happened. So when you asked me back to the original question, George, what it's like watching a show that you're in 
from the eyes of the through the eyes of the of the editors of the producers it's 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 quite scary and quite 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 uh quite difficult and quite jarring to know that there were so many moments of collective unity in there that they chose not to show and uh i'll allow you to make up you know your own reasons why you think that is but i've, I've given you my reasons why i think that is not all <laughs> well, I just you fucking did. You have to say why you think that is, but well, because because of capitalism, because of because of, because of because of money. Like at the end of the day, if you lower the vibration of people, if you keep people thinking that taking temptations, that taking the easy route, that that you know conspicuous no, consumption they, they, they is the way they, they, they to made success and happiness. The only way to happiness is to buy something. Yeah, and this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. This is the message that they want to give people. This is the message that the status quo want to give the people because if you keep people believing that then you keep them you keep them buying you keep them buying you keep them consumers you just keep people as consumers and that's what that's what that's what people want that's what people at the top want you keep consuming and who are you consuming from you're buying their stuff they're making money they're getting rich and you're getting poorer and you think you're getting happier but are you actually happy they say in the West we have the highest depress depression rates in the world. I mean, we're not very happy, are we? You go to countries where people have way less material possessions, but they have way more community and way more togetherness as a group. And you actually often find that their happiness is much, much greater. Was any of that shown in the show? I, I did. Um, I actually took to Twitter for the first time ever during your show. To defend my ass. <laughs> Pretty much, and to see yeah. what was going on. And... I left a tweet. I hope that um, mic's working properly. Go on. Is the light still on? Yeah, it's just because my hair keeps hitting it, so I hope oh, it's no, not it makes it go um, muffled. Um, I go left on, a George. tweet where so somebody said something about temptations and having fun and all that stuff. And I said, uh, it just came to me spontaneously. In that. I don't think I gave it a great deal of thought, but I wrote it and it seemed to get a, a fair few likes. But I said, if all the richest people on earth acted like the group who are not taking any temptations then everybody on earth would have enough money and food to go around because they say something like one percent of the world owns 90 percent of the world's yeah. wealth something like that so so i said uh the 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 idea of like well it's just it's just an experiment it's just a bit of fun and it's just it's like well not really because if human beings have the ability to to say no to certain things then there will be enough for everybody, um, and I thought I thought it, it was a, a disservice both to you lot and to the audience to not emphasise the fact that you lot were actually doing something which, as a a human collective, is very important. Absolutely. If you have a tribe of only twelve people living in in a jungle, and that's it, that's your whole, that's everyone you know, and one person comes along and eats all the food, then you're screwed. You're screwed. Um, so so it, it was it was interesting how such a basic moral managed to get so so, so tangled up in like just buy stuff and you'll be happier that was literally the message at the end of the show which made me feel very empty i remember watching that last episode and seeing how they it, summed it, it didn't up. resonate with you you had to watch it twice at the end of the last one you didn't you couldn't even process that they'd ended it that way i remember you said i watched the end again oh uh, yeah and you were like i couldn't believe that they said I couldn't believe they, they said, said that they said that. I was like, what the fuck are they talking about? That wasn't the show I was on. I was And they didn't mention that they rewarded you. Like you you and um the girl who the hero. they gave you a very special like meal and send off which no one else was allowed to access because you both had not taken any temptations, right? You had a special dinner and things. Well, I think everybody got a special dinner to be fair, but we were separated in, in different groups. So it was me to hero and James were separated from okay. from the others, but they also were separated in their own groups. Um, I think we all got delicious meals to be okay, fair. Good, good. We're all treated as equals, but I think you know when you think about the fact that when I was on the show, huh? Why did they separate you? Good question. I don't know. Maybe that, that is a strange thing to me. I, I can't understand that at all. I don't know. I think maybe because of the overlining tensions within, they felt that maybe it would be better that they separated us because they didn't want any, 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 any. But you're not children. Well, you say that, but there were moments, and definitely don't show this bit. But there was a moment. And they came down him like a ton of bricks. They 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 came on. They came to him. The producers it was completely unacceptable, and they will be kicked off the show faster than you. Do you know what I mean? 
So all of that stuff was there. So I think they were afraid that if they stuck us all in the hotel after what we went through, there was going to potentially be some 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 problems. Yeah. So I think that's probably why they separated us. To be fair. On that note, you had an altercation with the producer of the show. I did. The show. Did it ever cross your mind that maybe they'd reduced your um, interviews time. and things on on the show as a result of? Of course, some it's crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Who knows? Maybe they did. I can't say. The fact is that I always stood up for myself and I always stood up for what I thought was right. And there were moments in there where I felt like this main key producer um, was throwing his weight around and trying to intimidate and bully and act like he was the big shot as he stood in front of me smoking a cigarette as he squared up to me thinking he's a big man. And I don't care who you are. I don't care like what you're about. If you think you can intimidate me and bully me, you better be able to back it up because I will stand up for myself and I will challenge you head on. If you come to me head on, I'll come to you head on. I don't care. And so when I put myself in that position, he realised he was he was not physically, he was not able to push me around. He was not able to intimidate me uh, in person. But obviously, when it comes to TV and editing, he has all the power. So he may well have chosen to um, diminish my role within the TV show and put me in, in, in that position in order to find his own way. Maybe he's not that petty. Maybe he's not that small. Maybe he's not that guy. But potentially it's, it's possible that he, he may well be. Yeah, I mean, it, it is possible. You could have just said Fuck reduce this, his uh... runtime. Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe they... It's a combination of things, but I, I agree with you that they, they... They chose a narrative to make it look like everyone was in hell and they needed some... Well, some some confectionery to get out of it and you you were the opposite going it's beautiful it's a wonderful landscape I'm so happy to be here and they just didn't want anyone saying that so. well absolutely George and so I guarantee you, you there are people working show. on the show who are not in a power, position of power who would agree with you George there are, guarantee there are people that there were there were some can I just say the people that worked on the ground level that I saw on a daily basis in there they were all wicked like they were wicked they were all like in it together they all wanted to get great good content they all wanted to create a great TV show and they all had good hearts and good minds and good personalities on, on the ground level. But when it comes to higher levels where the, the bigger decisions are made and where um, things are edited and, and the narrative is created, there was so much that was embellished, that was distorted, that was corrupted and that was created and manifested into this distortion of what was the truth in order to create this capitalist picture of, of what, it, what, it, what we should be as a species and what we should do and the choices that we should make. I'll give you another example, George. So we're in there. You haven't asked me, but it's just come to my mind. Um, where Carolyn, the old lady, the poor old lady, uh, was, was climbing up the mountain. She was on the rope and she was climbing up the mountain. And they kept cutting to me and James yeah. sitting there, apparently just watching this, this poor, weak old lady as she struggled up the mountain and we just relaxed and took it easy. Now I can tell you right now, the producers, the editors, literally put one scene and another scene and put it together. Because in reality, that isn't what happened. That simply isn't what happened. We all went up there individually. And then once we got to the top, obviously we had supervisors to make sure that we were safe. And then we were cast aside. All of us were put aside to a, another place far away from where the person was climbing. And we had no power and no control to influence or support that person. So for them to just keep cutting to us as she was going up the mountain, like we were just, you know, late, not caring about this poor old lady shows you just how these editors and these producers work because they're willing to literally put two and two together to create a narrative that simply isn't true and to make someone like myself and James look like we don't care about this poor old lady when the fact is... Toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity and all this nonsense. The fact is, I'll give you, I'll be real with you, I don't get on with Carolyn, but if I was in a position to have helped her up the mountain... I guarantee you, just as I helped Lani, I would have helped her. Because that's what a real man and a real human being does. And I guarantee I would have helped her. But that opportunity wasn't there. Yet the editors decided to try and make out like it was. So what does that tell you about them? Um, I, I can actually... Uh, th- there's proof that what you're saying is, is 100% true. Because uh, I, I spotted that as an editor myself. That in that sequence is you and James. And at certain points... Um, I think maybe it's Dan yeah. is next to you, but Dan hasn't actually climbed the mountain yet. Well, there you go. So, so the edit is, if you just, it's just one moment when it's like the three right. of you and then it cuts and then Dan's at the bottom of the mountain. And I was like, hang on a second. This is clearly fake editing. Just trying to make he, me they, and they James have, they the enemy. They haven't tweaked it. The editors was a mistake on their part. 
But um, but yeah, if you just paid attention, Dan was there, but he hadn't climbed it yet. So it was like, well, obviously this is all over the place. This is. It's just it's it's a it's symptomatic of our society that this is what sells and this is what people are willing to do in order to create create rivalries and and this is what life is about for these people. You need to understand, audience. This is what life's about for these people. It's about creating a false narrative of people being against each other, of, of us, the 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 public fighting amongst each other whilst the rich at the top all they do is get richer and get more powerful and get stronger and more wealthy and get more power and more success as us and, and they throw you a crumb and then they throw you a crumb a chocolate bar and go there are and you happy the, are you happy oh lucky you and literally exactly they throw you a temptation and you take it and you think oh yeah lucky me it's just a joke you just we're just cogs in in their in their world but when we come together as a group when we understand that we're not rivals and we're not against each other, we're actually a community and actually a unit, we can overpower anyone. And this is this is the gift that we have as, as a species, but we need to come together. And unfortunately, with shows like Tempting Fortune, they don't want to show you that. They don't want to show you the truth. And there were moments in there, like I said, when we crossed that river where we were united as a group. But unfortunately, yeah, but also, that like, doesn't sell. Just... just... It's a very important thing that you you made friendships that seem like they will enjoy. Oh, one hundred percent. Friendships for life. One hundred percent. They could have ended it on that note. That some people in this show have made extremely strong bonds and strong friendships, and they will last a lifetime. But they didn't end it like they ended it like you were a bunch of individuals who all took your money and left one at a time, and and it was like there's animosity here and that sort of. One hundred percent. And and ending. and you know the sad thing is, George, that material is all there. So when we crossed that finishing line and got our money. We all came together as groups, as different groups. I remember stood next to James. I remember stood next to Truly. I remember stood next to Charlie. And we had interviews, uh, one-on-one interviews. We had two-on-one two uh, two on one interviews where we said, look, I'm, I remember, I remember, like it was yesterday, standing next to James, big guy, James, and we spoke about how the best thing to come out of the show was this friendship and how we couldn't have done it without each other and how we give, gave each other so much strength in order to overcome the, the, the challenges that we had in there. And we were so proud to have, we were so happy to have met each other and proud of what we achieved and how the brotherhood that we created in there was probably the most significant thing that we'll take from the show. Did they show any of it? No. No. They, because they, they were more fussed about going, um, but these people took some chocolate bars and therefore they had a better time. <laughs> so because, keep that exactly. in mind the next time you go to Tesco. <laughs> exactly. The, the more you buy, the happier you'll be. 100%. And that was what we got out of it. Anyway, you did say uh, we're not going to need all 55 minutes, but it looks like we did because we've got three minutes left. Oh, amazing. <laughs> well, fucking hey, um, any quick ones? Any quick sound? Any quick things? Quick bites? Uh, uh, quick bites. If you can cover it in three minutes, um, there was there was mentioned before you went in the show that essentially you were entering a Garden of Eden. Yeah. And in the Bible, the tempter is the devil. That is. And, and Jesus says, get behind me, Satan in reference to when Satan repeatedly tries to tempt Jesus, get behind me, Satan. And I thought it was very interesting that they, they pitched it to you that way, and yet that which is the devil, they instead made out to be Christ in the show. They reversed everything. And temptation became God, and Eden became hell, when it was supposed to be the other way. It's and a really I, fascinating point, George. And, and I was shocked, actually, that they pitched it to you one way and, and, and aired it another. But if you if you have anything, you can sum up on that oh man i would just say that look, capitalism that money that greed that consumption that gluttony these are all the things that they have basically said is what you want to take from life is what you want to what you want to indulge in indulgence is, is key indulgence is power indulgence is joy and happiness yeah, the truth is when i went into that show that was exactly the opposite of what they told me they told me you'd be going to the into the garden of eden and you would be tempted by the by the snake by the apple and so for me that was a spiritual war that was a spiritual battle that i was in that I was endeavoring to succeed in and for me i succeeded in it it's just a real shame and it shows you the truth of these corporate companies that they believe and they expressed as you saw at the end of the last episode that in order to win and succeed in life Gluttony and temptations is what you need. That's how you get joy and that's how you get happiness. So it shows you the truth of, of how these, these things work. And you can make your own decisions of how you want to live your life. It's, it's, it is sad that they didn't tell the audience that that was a stance that you were told. Absolutely. But then if they did that, how would it have ended? Then they would have had to change their ending and they would have had to be more authentic and real about what it was about. 
and they couldn't do that. They didn't want to do that. I wonder if they knew what they were doing as they, or as the show went on, they started to change the narrative. I'm wondering if they already if they had that plan from the beginning or if it changed as the show went on. But I do feel like I was duped, definitely. I was probably a bit naive. To be honest with you, I was probably a bit naive going in, but I could only believe what they told me, and that's what they told me. And so for me, it was like a, a real mission, a real spiritual battle. However anyone edits anything, the reality is, is the person who has the willpower to say no gets to live with the pride of having... 100%. Done that for the rest of their life. And I know that I did it. So no matter how they edited it and how they tried to show it and how they tried to make out that happiness comes from taking temptation, I know how much beautiful, happy, joyful moments I had in there just through connecting with my group, with the wolf pack, and with nature and with my, my soul, my spirit. So I'm forever uh, thankful and blessed for the experience. And it might not be the show that you saw, but it's the, it's the experience that I truly had. So I'll always take that with me for the rest of my days.